A warm greeting? Today is Monday, August 5, 2024. This is meteorologist Ruben Garcia. In this video, we will be discussing several cyclones and an area of interest for cyclonic development. First, we will talk about the Eastern Pacific region, where we have four cyclones interacting with each other in what we call the Fujiwara effect. This is an extremely rare event, especially since it is happening simultaneously among four cyclones. On the other hand, we will talk about Tropical Storm Devi, which is currently over northern Florida and southern Georgia. This tropical storm will move into the Atlantic waters and then enter South Carolina and North Carolina on a very slow trajectory, promising to leave excessive rainfall and severe flooding for the region. In the last part of the video, we will talk about a strong tropical wave currently located north of Venezuela, which will continue its trajectory west-northwest over the next few days and could find favorable conditions for cyclonic development by the end of this week. Let's start by talking about the Eastern Pacific region, where we currently have four cyclones. First, we have Tropical Storm Carlota, Tropical Depression Daniel, Tropical Storm Amelia, and Tropical Storm Fabio. In this case, you can see that Tropical Storm Carlota and Tropical Depression Daniel are very close, and similarly, Tropical Storms Fabio and Amelia are very close. Therefore, we are seeing an extremely rare event called the Fujiwara effect happening simultaneously with four tropical cyclones. For those who are not familiar with this effect, it occurs when two tropical cyclones get too close and begin to interact, where one of them orbits around the other or creates a common center. Typically, the stronger cyclone absorbs the circulation of the weaker cyclone. This is precisely what we are seeing, where Tropical Storm Carlota is absorbing the circulation of Tropical Depression Daniel. Further east, Tropical Storm Fabio is absorbing Tropical Storm Amelia. In the end, when this interaction occurs, both disturbances tend to weaken slightly, but after the circulation is absorbed by the other, the remaining cyclone usually strengthens. In this case, it appears that Tropical Storm Fabio will be absorbing Tropical Storm Amelia and eventually also absorbing the circulation of Tropical Storm Carlota and Tropical Depression Daniel. So, it is a very interesting interaction, which we can see in the GFS model projection. Observe how the Fujiwara effect occurs in both cases, and in the end, Tropical Storm Fabio ends up absorbing the circulation of the other three cyclones. Fortunately, Tropical Storm Fabio will continue on a trajectory over Pacific waters, so it does not pose a risk to Mexico. After a hyperactive period in the Pacific, it seems that cyclonic activity will begin to decrease over the coming days and weeks. This corresponds to the fact that the favorable phase of the Madden-Julian Oscillation is now over the Atlantic, and this time, the Atlantic region will have a lot of cyclonic activity while the Eastern Pacific will be in a phase that is not favorable for the development of tropical cyclones. Thus, it is very likely that we are currently seeing the highest cyclone activity that we will see all year for the Eastern Pacific region. Meanwhile, the Atlantic continues to become more active. Here we have what is now Tropical Storm Debbie, which entered as a Category 1 hurricane this morning over Florida's Big Bend. Currently, the center of circulation is starting to move towards southern and southeastern Georgia, continuing to bring heavy rain and excessive rainfall accumulations across South Carolina and Georgia. Eventually, this rain will move into North Carolina. Here we have the official forecast from the National Hurricane Center. Tropical storm winds are affecting northern Florida and southern Georgia. The center of circulation is expected to move into the Atlantic waters during the afternoon hours of tomorrow, Tuesday. Therefore, a tropical storm warning is in effect for the coast of South Carolina and Georgia. Then it will remain over Atlantic waters before eventually moving over land. In this case, over South Carolina and North Carolina between Wednesday and Friday of this week. It will then maintain a trajectory over Virginia, Delaware and Maryland. Although the wind is not a major concern, we are worried about the total rainfall accumulations expected across this region, especially in South Carolina where you can see projections of 16 to 20 inches of rain over the next five days. Additionally, some areas in southern North Carolina and Georgia will receive 8 to 10 inches of additional rain from today, Monday, until next Thursday. So here at Hurricane Info, we hope all our followers and friends in the southeastern United States are in a safe place. We will now talk about a strong tropical wave located south of Puerto Rico and north of Venezuela. This tropical wave has a low probability of becoming a tropical depression when it reaches the western waters of the Caribbean Sea or the Gulf of Mexico. As of 2 p.m., the National Hurricane Center maintains a 30% chance of development, and as I mentioned in the morning video, everything will depend on its trajectory. If it maintains a more northerly trajectory over the Caribbean Sea waters, the chances of development increase significantly. While if it maintains a more westerly trajectory and eventually reaches Nicaragua and Honduras, the chances of development decrease due to land interaction. We can see these scenarios in the projections of global models. Let's start with the American model. Notice how it has the strong tropical wave moving through the Caribbean Sea and eventually developing a low-pressure system east of Nicaragua and Honduras during the morning hours of Friday, then moving over the Yucatan Peninsula on Saturday 
possibly as a tropical depression. When it reaches the Gulf of Mexico waters, it begins to strengthen. However, when we look at the GFS model members, very few of them develop a tropical depression, and those that do keep it quite weak as it crosses over the Yucatan Peninsula. On the other hand, we have the European model projection. The European model keeps the tropical wave quite strong but with a more southerly trajectory, which would bring the tropical wave into Nicaragua and Honduras during the afternoon hours of Thursday. For this reason, the European model in its latest run does not develop a tropical depression as it keeps the wave axis over Central America. Remember, for development to occur, it must remain further north over the Caribbean seawaters. However, some members of the European model do develop a tropical storm just east of the Yucatan Peninsula or in the Gulf of Mexico waters. This is why the National Hurricane Center maintains a 30% chance of development. In the coming days, we will continue to monitor the progress of the tropical wave and possible changes in the projections. Remember, a more southerly trajectory over Central America would prevent it from becoming a tropical cyclone, while if it remains a bit further north, the chances of development increase. So here at Hurricane Info, we will stay attentive to this tropical wave. Don't miss any of the videos I will be recording in the coming days. I invite you to subscribe to my channel. Go to the bottom of the video, click the red button that says subscribe, and then click the bell to receive notifications when I record new videos. Well, that's all for this forecast update. I hope everyone has an excellent day.